all right we're back for the last video of unit four it's a sad day today all right you're not going to hear my voice for a long time i'm so sorry about that um i mean i'm sure you're happy about that actually but that's all right so today we are going to be unpacking the tangent graph Ooh, let's get comfortable here um and get it going okay we're gonna be unpacking tangent today and then our next video um, we're going to be graphing tangent, okay, and moving it around and applying our shifts and all that fun stuff. Um, just as it has been for a long time, or for this whole unit period is one of di the distance to complete one cycle. Amplitude is half the distance of your range. Domain is your set of all possible inputs. Range is all your possible outputs. And we're going to talk about this ver idea of a vertical asymptote today as it appears in our tangent function, okay? Um, how does tangent relate to our unit circle? Well, let's think about tangent as we've talked about our in, in our unit circle. Tangent, okay, when, when we're looking at our unit circle, when finding our tangent values, well, how do we find our, find our tangent values? We put our y value over our x value for tangent of theta. Okay, tangent of theta can also be thought of as opposite over adjacent. All right, when solving in right triangles. Also, tangent can be thought of similar to y over x, sine of theta over cosine of theta. Okay? Um, so if we think about our unit circle here, all right, if we think about our unit circle in general, uh, we want to plot the values of our unit circle on this actual graph. Plot the values of tangent on our graph. Well, let's think. Just think about like let's just start at let's start at zero because why not? You know, at zero, what is tangent? If I think y over x, well, y is zero and x is one, so that is zero. And my next point here, I have pi over four. Remember, these are inputs. Of theta, these are our angles, and our output is the value of tangent of theta. But what is pi over 4? Pi over 4 in tangent is 1. Okay. Pi over 2, tangent of theta, tangent of pi over 2, is undefined because I have 1 over 0. Tangent of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1. Tangent of pi is 0. Tangent of 5 pi over 4 is 1. Tangent of 3 pi over 2 is y over x, negative 1 over 0, which is undefined. Tangent of 7 pi over 4 is negative 1, and 2 pi is 0. Let's also go backwards here. Tangent of negative pi over 4, okay, which is the same as the tangent of 7 pi over 4, is negative 1. The tangent of negative pi over 2, which is the same as the tangent of 3 pi over 2, is undefined. Okay? So, we have this little note down here. Think about other angles on the unit circle and use your calculator and plug in some of those values for tangent to connect the points and complete the curve, and you should have vertical asymptotes on your graph. Okay? Well, let's talk about the first half here. Um, we think about the tangent of, you know, Think about the tangent of pi over 6, okay, well tangent of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2, or excuse me, root 3 over 3, which is about here. Tangent of negative pi over 6, which is 11 pi over 6, is about negative root 3 over 3, which is about there, okay. If I have a value for where um, my tangent is undefined, meaning y is undefined, okay, that means I'm going to have a vertical asymptote. All right, so I have a vertical asymptote there, negative pi, or, whoops, at pi over 2, negative pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. Okay, meaning when I input this angle, I will get an undefined answer. All right, so it does not work. It's an error message in your calculator if you were to input that into your calculator. All right. So we want to connect our dots, okay, our dots, or after we connect our dots, our function, you'll notice, kind of looks similar to a cubic function, a little bit, okay, it's a nice smooth curve here, 
through our dots. And that will go continue to go, and this will continue to go down. All right. Um, it's a nice smooth curve. All right, it looks like a cubic a little bit. Um, it looks like our disco man. So where is a complete cycle on your graph all right, when you created it, or on the graph you created? Well, if we think about a complete cycle, a complete cycle, okay, is actually in between our two vertical asymptotes. You notice how our graph here starts to repeat after each pair of, or after each vertical asymptote. So here, my graph, here, my graph, here, my graph of tangent, et cetera, et cetera. So technically, all right, one complete cycle goes from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, okay? And if we write that in interval notation, which is how we should, if we just look at one section, negative pi over two to pi over two, or if we wrote that in inequality notation, it could look like that. All right. Now here's the deal. You'll notice that it starts to repeat. Okay, we're going to start about that. We're going to talk about that repetition because the domain is a little bit funky. So we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, but let's think about our domain and range of our arctangent function. An arctangent, hopefully you'll recall that the domain of arctangent is from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, the range, okay, thinking about arc tangent, I'm thinking about arc tangent, I look where I look on this half of the graph. So our range, remember, is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Well, now how does the domain of a function relate to its inverse? Remember, the domain and range of a function and its inverse are flipped. So the domain of my inverse is going to be the range of my function. And the range of my function is going to be the domain of my inverse. Or vice versa. Domain of my function, range of my inverse, range of my function, domain of my inverse. Okay. Well, this is kind of, this is for one, God bless America, one period. You guys can read that, right? That's one period, okay, or one cycle, all right? So that's only one of them. But if you notice by our graph, the tangent continues on forever and ever. So the domains can be kind of tricky because this function continues to repeat, right? As do a lot of, as do periodic functions. Okay. So domain, all right, is going to technically be, and we're not going to do a whole lot of work with this in this course, but the domain is technically from negative pi over two plus pi times some integer n. Okay. So well, what does that mean? Negative pi over two so if, if my n value is 1, negative pi over 2 plus pi will give me pi over 2. Negative pi over 2, because it's my lowest value that I see here, plus 2 pi will give me 3 pi over 2. All right, so we're looking at multiples of pi over 2 for our original, for our parent function. Okay. And again, we're not going to do a whole lot with that. We just want to show it to you a little bit. All right, but let's talk about our parent function. All right, amplitude we're going to come back to um, in a second here, excuse me. Um, the period we know is pi. The domain, as we found out on our last slide, is negative pi over 2 plus pi times n, where n is an integer. All right, the range is from negative infinity to infinity. Okay. The amplitude. Remember the amplitude we said in our first slide was half the distance of our range. Well, if our range is from negative infinity to infinity, how do I take half of that? I do not. All right. So there is not an amplitude, but there is going to be a vertical stretch and shrink here. Okay. Stretch or shrink. Vertical. I'm going to write vert. 
stretch or shrink. Let's leave it at vert stretch for now. How about it? Okay. Um, vertical stretch. Let's see. Um, blah, blah, blah. Let's see what does one period look like. All right. So what does one period look like from our last slide? All right. We had some key points, negative pi over two, pi over four, or excuse me, negative pi over four. Zero was a key point. Positive pi over four. And positive pi over two. Okay, remember these were our vertical asymptotes, negative pi over two and pi over two. All right, um, I had negative one and positive one here, zero here. Okay, connect my dots, boom. That's one period. Now, this is a very important point here. All right, that's gonna be called, it's not our middle or midline anymore. It's our middle point now. It's our middle point. That'll be very important when shifting, okay? When applying our horizontal and vert vertical shifts, all right, we'll go based off this middle point at zero, zero. Okay, let's keep going. One more slide and we are almost there. Oh, so exciting. All righty. So, um, still, again, remember our amplitude we just talked about? None. All right, our A value will affect a vertical stretch or shrink just like in our transformations. Okay, that's why we did all those transformations, so make sure we understood that. All right, our vertical shift is still our D value. Our horizontal shift is still C, but that'll be important in a second here. Our period is now not 2 pi over b, but pi over b. Again, the period for tangent is pi. So the to find the period, I do pi divided by b. Pi over b. My intervals are still pi over 4, except I'm going to move forward and backward z from my C value, okay? Now, what does that mean? All right, we talked about, I alluded to this in the last slide, okay? If I have my vertical asymptotes here in negative pi over two and pi over two, and here's a critical point, and zero, zero is a critical point. We, what the heck is going on there? And this is another point over here. Okay. Uh, again, our C will affect this point, okay? It'll affect that point there, all right? We'll move back and forth from our C point. So if I shift this two units to the right, okay, I'm going to move back and forth from C. I'm going to move one, two units to the right of C, and I'm going to move one, two units to the left of C, okay? Or two, excuse me, two intervals. And I'll write that down in my strategies here in a second. Um, vertical asymptote is something new as well. To find our vertical asymptote, where our first vertical asymptote starts at negative pi over 2. And I'm going to set that equal to this b times x minus c to find where my first vertical asymptote is. Or, just as I alluded to here, and then we're going to show this when we practice graphing, I can count back two intervals. All right, so what are my strategies? My strategies are to find key features, find key features, okay, plot C, and count two intervals left and right. Count two intervals left for a vertical asymptote and right for a vertical asymptote of C. And this says features, by the way. All right. So we're going to practice this in our next video. Okay. Contain your excitement. I can't. Oh, wait. One more thing. The period of tangent is pi. It's pi.